Greetings, Earthlings. Are you receiving our transmission? It is your new overlook. Okay, I'm kidding. Hello, hi. Uh, post show 113, 113, back, to little two week hiatus. You'll hear us argue about how long the hiatus actually was in the opening minutes of this show, but it was two weeks. And for that, we deeply apologize. Uh, believe me, we give you a very detailed account of our absence um, in the show, so I won't ramble on that. Uh, but it's good to be back, and uh, we covered quite a bit today. Um, what do, what do we cover? I'll give you some highlights here. Hell Divers 2. There's no way we can't not talk about that. I'm aware that was a double negative. It was intentional. Uh, Zone of Intentra. Zone of Interest. See, previous Dave would just start re-recording. The Dave of today, well, he's comfortable with his failures, um, or too lazy to restart. Uh, we catch up on Free Run, Solo Leveling, Shangri-La Frontier. I'm still binging through that. Uh, we talk about One Punch Man, Season 3. I guess that's more of a news thing. Uh, then I give my incredibly definitive, uh, the review everyone's been waiting for, I'm sure, account of True Detective Season 4 towards the end of the show. Uh, Grant talks briefly about Shogun. Uh, we have some news and random things sprinkled throughout, including uh, you know early Dune reviews, crunchy roll rewards and we wrap up on uh, on the Q&A and it was a uh, quite a good queue and we've got uh, hopefully uh, some good A's. So uh, with that I bid you adieu and uh, enjoy the show. Oh hey there Grant. Hello David. Are you feeling democratic good sir? <laughs> Ooh, I can feel the free freedom oozing from me. <laughs> For the love of liberty, we have returned. <laughs> oh my god, a two week break, dude. We never do that. Yeah. No, awful. I know. Was I it always two weeks. Yeah, we were two because I think you had a thing, oh, then I, I had a thing. I, yeah. yeah, yeah, fuck. Um, and every time we miss a week, I always come back and I'm like, hey, we're loud because we're grown ups. And yeah. um, I'm gonna be honest, it's much of the same this time. Um, yeah. It's never planned. It's just like sometimes life happens, and it happens to you so violently that you cannot yeah. podcast, and uh, that's that's what happened to both of us sequentially, yeah. in a row. Um, it's weird. It's actually so bad. I it's been like I'm not trying to be like uh, you know like I don't know if you call this like zeitgeisty or like you know like I have not been around so many sick people since like the height of COVID. Like, everyone yeah, yeah. I talk to is, like, so sick. And like, I'm, like, an abnormal amount of number. Like, and I feel like that's, you hear that all the time. Like, ah, there's a thing going around. You always fucking hear that, eh? Especially as, like, a parent. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, there's a bug going on. It's like, fuck off. I don't want to fucking hear about it. Like, I know there is. I know it's out there. I don't want to hear about it. But, like, actually, like, it's a crazy amount of people I know that are fucking sick right now. Yeah. Same here. Um, And it's just, I just could not shake it. And, uh, mm. well, we're, we're not even, we're two minutes in and we're talking about being old. But I think, like, the big thing is, like, it just takes longer to recover now. Yeah, or it's illnesses and ailments in general just hit you differently. Uh, you know, the, the closer you are to the end of your life. And we're in our mid-30s, so, you know, we got probably a hey, couple, hey, couple hey, years left. We are not mid-30s. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Hey, hey, you took that personally, eh? A little bit. Oh, God, you're right. No, we're, we're early 30s. That's good, right? Mm -hmm. That's, uh... I'll take that. It's a vague yeah. number. Yeah, it's vague. I, yeah, it's I don't feel good about it, to be honest with yeah. you. I would give... I'm trying to think, like, would you trade all the advantages that your early 30s give you to have one more year of your mid-20s? Fuck no. Yeah. Okay. 20 sucked, man. Mid but yeah, yeah like, that's true. I hindsight, think, it was, like, okay. But hindsight like, is 2020, yeah. always, yeah, right? Yeah. I think the big thing about mid to late 20s is just, well, you, you probably can't relate, is just the absolute lack of consequences. And sure. You're just, it's okay for you to be a person whose life is not together. And, like, no one bats an eye. Like, oh, he's, he was 25. He's going to figure it out. You know yeah. what I mean? But yeah. to be in that state, and I'm not in that state. I know that, like, we're both doing fine. You know what I mean? Um, but I like the idea of it. Because to be a mess at, like, in your mid-30s is a much tougher look than being a mess at 25. Yeah, it's borderline scary. And sometimes, <laughs> yeah. and again, I, I reiterate, we're not messes. But sometimes you just want to be a mess. You know what I mean? Sometimes you like... I yeah. just gotta, I wanna phone it in for a week and just be a useless human. 
and uh, yeah. I, I just I just no not being able to be that. inefficient. I think that's the better road. It inefficient, yeah, that's probably yeah. more accurate. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, okay, dude, I don't even I'm know. So glad we're back. I missed. I missed. It, 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 we say this every time. I think maybe it's even more so because we did. We it has been two weeks, but like, like sitting like Tuesday night, you know, just being around. I'm like, oh, this doesn't feel <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, like I've it's like you know, you're like hunched over, like fuck, like yeah, it's uh. Yeah, it's good. Was to it be two back. weeks? It was two no. weeks, dude. No, because no, I'm telling. <laughs> I'm looking at the was schedule. It, really? it was two weeks. Yeah. Damn. We were. I think you were gonna push it a day, and then I had something that day after, so we skipped your week. And then, oh, wait, am I crazy? No, I'm pretty sure it's a week because I was sick the Tuesday, and we were gonna push to Wednesday, and then you were sick the Wednesday, so we. Had, I'm pretty sure it's only been a week. Wait, I'm looking. Isn't this funny that we're doing this live? Okay, wait. Now, now we have to know. <laughs> now we have to figure it out. Okay. Post show one twelve published mm-hmm. February fourteenth. Nothing on February twentieth. Nothing on February twenty or twenty seventh. We're now March fifth. Two weeks. Fuck. What happened? Anyways. Oh, fl- <laughs> uh, trip. I was in Miami. Trip. I was in trip. Miami. Boom. Word. That's what it was. Another thing about being old is like you pay for those trips. You yeah. know what I mean? Like what. <laughs> When I say pay, I mean, like, on the back end of every trip, it's like, oh, here's all these things that, like, hope your vacation was good. Now you're going to be inundated for a month because you took a week off. <laughs> yeah. Not the actually. plane killed my back. <laughs> yeah, the plane killed Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, I had a tough flight. Uh, Did you? Air Canada. I don't know. I don't... Like, you know me. I am a slight man. Some say um, mm-hmm. truly afflicted uh, with Napoleon Syndrome. Yeah. Backpack uh, size. I love it. Yeah, but... If I had a hard time, I got I got really bad luck, and we had like a six a.m. flight international, mm-hmm. and checking in, we checked in pretty early, but we both got stuck with middle seats, and like again, I'm a like I said, Wait, how you, many how many seats in like a section? Three. So there's only one middle seat, but oh, okay. Okay. we were in different rows, and we both got middle seats, Ooh, and like we're we're two small people, and it was the worst flight that both of us have had in a long time. And I was like, I can't imagine being like a regular to slash larger sized human on an Air Canada flight. I couldn't believe how small it was. Damn. It was shocking. And the whole leg goes numb. Yeah. Anyway. I remember the last time I took a, um, like a, a lengthy trip. It was not, it was a train. And it, it, actually this is a, this is a funny. Didn't you take over... a 24 hour train once? Yeah, dude, 24 hours. That's the one I'm speaking of. Yeah, I took a 24-hour train ride. And uh, I, again, the hu- actually, it's funny because we were talking like the hubris of your 20s. And I was like, you know, I'm good. I can do 24 hours easy on yeah. a train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It get absolutely insane. Yeah, it I remember is... like, get, like getting to Halifax. I was like, mm, never again. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's so weird, too. It's so funny. Like, trains are such a weirdly specific one. And it goes back to the 20s thing that you just mentioned. Like, I remember... I think maybe interviewing in Toronto semi-frequently mm. or like going up there to visit friends or I, there was a period and I want to say, I don't know, 2016, let's say, or 17, where I was going to Toronto a lot on the mm. train. And I was like, this is so dope. I was like, I'm so businessy. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could drink on the way there. You could like do emails on the way back. And um, yeah, acting like you're doing like the New York to Boston train or something. Yeah, exactly. Like that. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. a grown up. I'm wearing, I'm wearing an unstructured <laughs> blazer. These people don't know that I'm an absolute deviant. But... <laughs> But you do it, and you're like, oh, it's only four hours, it's easy, it's cost-effective, love it. I had to do that train recently, and I, I was miserable. I was like, I can't believe, really? I don't know why, I was like, I think it was just like, uh, I, you know, I, this is the 30s thing, I was like, oh, is when I was having knee issues, like at a particularly oh, bad time, word. and so it was just like, oh my god, the, just not being able to stretch my legs is killing me, I can't sleep as well because of that, that makes the trip longer. When you're in mid, mid-20s, you're like, I'm going to slam two of these beers and like sleep for four straight hours, and it's like teleporting to from one major city to another. And then in your mid, mid not mid, early thirties, it was just a vastly dis- different experience when you got a bum knee. You know what I mean? And you're approaching the end of your life. So it was, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't dig it. <laughs> feel you. Anyway, um, okay. Uh, well, we started this off democratically um mm. let's maybe just briefly mention uh hell divers and i want to i want to start us off on a very negative note okay yeah i've been playing so much of this have you yeah it's so fun 
Yeah. Um, I, mean, I, have, I want to. I, I'm, I'm hoping to be like good to go soon. Tomorrow. Yeah. So, but I have an issue that I've seen threads that of other people having that, in retrospect, is actually like pretty significant, and I haven't seen any fixes for it um, so far. And you know, like they're under it. They're like the biggest game on the planet right now. You know, mm-hmm. they're high Third, in demand. Do you see the stat that came out today for them or yeah. yesterday? Third week in a row, the sales have increased. Unbelievable. Good for unheard, apparently unheard of in uh, there was a, a statistic they had but like it's it's been a long time since a game has continued to grow like that you love to see people win you know what i mean i'm yes. big on that um yeah. so that with that said though and believe me we're going to discuss all the wins and like all the ways that they're absolutely killing it because it's very very encouraging to see happen um but the issue i'm having is how and maybe you'll know but i haven't met anyone with a fix yet is Helldivers has display names because it's a multiplayer game, right? Sure. Um, and what it seems to do is it scrapes your uh, Steam name by default. And it just uses your Steam name if you're on okay. Steam. On PlayStation, yeah. completely different. I, I don't know how it works. But on PC... Yeah, it uses just my gamer tag. My, my gamer tag. Yeah, which makes sense, right? It's, it's pulling from somewhere else. Which is what it's doing on PC. Yeah. And on Steam, your username by default is if you don't set one it just it pulls from your email address so by default if your name if your email address is first name dot last name then your username is going to be first name dot last name and i've since updated my username but it doesn't seem to matter so in hell divers just internet strangers are just seeing my full name on the internet (laughs) and it's it's exactly how my email address is structured and I'm not, like, some, like, crazy, like, terrified about privacy kind of person. Sure. But, yeah. like, my full name and email is just on broadcast to anyone and everyone I play Helldivers with. Which is kind of nuts. And I see there's threads everywhere about other people with the same issue. And, like, oh, it pulls from Steam. Try changing your Steam name. I've done that. No bueno. Still nothing, eh? Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's, it's so funny because I'm not... <clears throat> not that I've been, like, anti-multiplayer games my whole life. I've just... I've been very, like... Um, and, and maybe it was like an unhealthy, you know, thing. But like, I just only wanted to play with people I knew. So like, I, sure. the abs- and like anonym- anonymity online. I was like, always make sure, like, no, if you're not on my friends list, cannot see this, cannot see that. Mm-hmm. And for years, I've always just been like very diligent of like people only see my gamer tag and da da da. da. And uh, so like, what you're going through right now just gives me like panic. <laughs> yeah, it's not cool. <laughs> like, like, I don't, I don't like hearing that. It's super not cool. I mean, like, yeah, yeah it's just uh, it's far from ideal. But that aside, um, yeah, I find that you know, like a lot of bugs and whatnot. But yeah, I this God damn game, it, there's a lot of bugs. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of bugs. But this game's unreal. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the biggest issue I've probably had is like disconnects or kicks or um, basically doing 90% of a mission and then something happening that ends up with me not getting any credit for it, which is like pretty yeah. frustrating. I played for like, I want to say 90 minutes the other day, which mm-hmm. was like three to four missions, and I got sure. credit for one. Yeah, That's the, pretty uh, it. the night we all played together, um, actually it was the last time I played it, uh, we played all night long, walked away with nothing. Like, we, you and I played for hours. Like, you and I were up, like, quite late playing, and I just walked away with, like, nothing. Yeah. And I signed back in a couple of days later just to see, and nothing came through. I think but I like, got partial credit. I remember I signed it in the morning the next day, and there was, like, a couple things there, but definitely not what mm. we should have had. But I don't know. Yeah. Um, uh, but, yeah, man, it's... it's Everyone uh, should play it. Like, are if, you on the Reddit if, community? Um, A little bit. I'm seeing stuff here and there. But, it's just uh, funny, like... It's just neat seeing the whole community like mourn the loss of a planet or of a system, or uh, you know when updates are pushed and whatnot. It's I'm very very curious to see how this game does medium to long term. It's got some legs. Yeah. It has got some legs. It's because, just such a good idea. And it's it's so funny, you know, because right now like there's a lot of I don't know if you've been seeing all this, but like like WB right now like across all movies and tv and games they're kind of bit like a punching bag like i think deservedly right now oh oh, yeah yeah there's like some very very strange decisions being made and on the gaming side um 
Asleep at the wheel is not even the right fucking term. It's just like no one cares. It's just, you know, all these companies like Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, like they all have monetization on the mind, right? Like yeah. all the publishers, the, you know, the, the designers, all it's like at the end of the day, people in the management and the corporate and all that, like, you know, they, they want to make their money and all Like I get that. But WB these past couple of weeks, specifically since the, the launch of uh, the, the most recent Suicide Squad game, and just how they bungled all that, and like WB kind of came out. I think yesterday uh, it was either this morning or yesterday, saying like, "Yeah, yeah like we're you know the AAA single player uh, market is uh, volatile, and we want to get out of it. We want to get to like you know shorter, smaller, mon- you know monetized games. Mm-hmm. And, like that's like a route we want to look. And it's so funny, like just how they're ignoring like all their immediate failures, which are what they you know they see like a single player, like semi single player game is like the problem. Even yeah, I saw around it, and it's cra- like it's just crazy, like the direct. So anyway, but you see what I think, like I feel bad for like a game like Helldivers, where you know there is some monetization, but it's just for flair, like it's PVE stuff. It's not like you know player versus player and all that. Like you can sp- spend money if you want to, but uh, mm-hmm. all these other companies see the success of a game like this, like oh yeah, that's what we should be doing. And I'm gonna, I feel like there's gonna be in the next couple of years, people are going to be chasing Helldivers a little bit. For sure. And people way. have short memories, right? They're like, oh, look what's oh, working right crazy. now. Let's pivot immediately. Yeah. Very peculiar. Um, but it's it's always fun to be part of, like, this big cultural phenomenon. Like, get in on something, and yeah. it's actually worth the hype. You can immediately see why it resonates with people. It's funny. Like, it's such a good game, but you really got to wonder, like, how much of it is the comedic um satirical angle starship mm. troopers vibe i just watched Star- starship troopers on the weekend did you uh, really oh my god yeah because i just can't i can't get enough of it you know what i mean oh, so and awesome. dude it's uh it's unbelievably close yeah. um but i i you gotta wonder because they just seem to they seem to pair actual video game stuff with a very legitimate theme like perfectly like it just it never comes together like this like yeah bugs and i get it you know what i mean but just like the execution of this game is just it's just lightning in a bottle it just you know it's it's one of those games where it's just it's just elevated just just a little bit you know where it's like it's tongue-in-cheek but it's still like it's solid system solid gameplay like you know it's not you know, it's it, 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 it technically it's a pretty good technical showpiece if you ask me. Like the physics, the physics in the game are pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the just kind of like you know, you know, uh, experiment A results in like experiment B. You know, like just like the tooling around you can kind of do. And uh, you know, we were talking you know, just 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 off mic before like their marketing, like their Twitter account is posting like official propaganda posters. Like, you know, pro, you know, like, as, like, for, like, content updates, mm-hmm. you know, like, as if, like, you know, you'd, you'd be walking on Super Earth at the supermarket, you're like, oh, shit, like, the new friggin', you know, walkable mech machine mm-hmm. is gonna be coming to this planet, see, or the factories are, like, burning overtime to get this friggin' update out. It, like, it's, it's genius. I don't know. It's, it really it's is. It's very, yeah, it's very, they're, very smart. They're staying in the pocket of, like, what they've created. It's like, yeah, never break character. Screw it. Like, people are so into it. Like, I mentioned the Reddit community earlier. Like, people are, like, signing their posts, like... And, and, like, uh, yours democratically. You know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. it's just hilarious. <laughs> Even, like, their loading screens. Like, there's a loading screen where you go to change settings or something. And the loading says, please wait democratically. It's like, oh, yeah. my God. You, like, they put it everywhere. It's just so funny. My favorite... One of my favorite things from the game is if you actually go look in one of the storefronts. I think it's, it, like, it's the section of items that you would pay, like, real money for. And it's mm-hmm. just, like, costumes or whatever. But they have, like, fake customer reviews like generated <laughs> yeah for all the products and it's like you know like yeah my second wife is gonna love this you know yeah, yeah. It's something, and it's like a, a review for like a knife you know yeah. like it's or uh or something like that or a cider or whatever it is but yeah man very very fun love love me some hell divers um god man i don't even know where to start okay how about how about we start here um because it's topical right how about yeah. we start with you know the biggest movie on the planet right now Ooh. I saw something this weekend. Uh, You're right, Grant. I saw yeah. Zone of Interest. <gasps> how, <laughs> sa- how sad were you at the end? Which is not Dune. Uh, I don't know. Did you see Dune, by the way? No. We're, right, we're going. Uh, we're going Saturday. Okay. I don't know if I. Yeah. I don't know if I'm able to see it this weekend. It's gonna be tight. I mean, I need to see it. Um, yeah, it's gonna be in theaters for like a minute. So. Yeah. Um, 
But I did see Zone of Interest. Um, yeah. And so you have not seen it, I presume? No, nope, it's on the list, though. Like, I'm going to try and get it done this week for, for Oscars. Buddy, peculiar movie. Yeah? Peculiar. Ooh, that's interesting. Peculiar. Okay. Yeah. Uh, have you cause... seen any of Jonathan Glazer's movies? Other than this? <sighs> Under the know. Skin with Scarlett Johansson. That's the common one people have seen. Yeah. Long time ago, though. And I think, like, Half Asleep. Yeah. Anything good. else I would have seen? Ah, uh, what else did he do? Um, I'm off the top of my head, it's the yeah. Is it under the skin? Is it under the skin? John Glazer? Pretty sure it is. See now, two thirty year old fucking googling. What yeah, did this director direct? <laughs> I got him here. I got him here. Okay. Oh, he's nominated for two Oscars. Yeah, man. So of interest has got some hype for it. Jeez, Louise. Known for Under the Skin, Zone of Interest, Birth. Sexy Beast. Oh, Sexy Beast. I've seen First it. Light. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Apple Watch Series 4? Flight? Commercial? <laughs> yeah, Damn, dude. dude. Gotta get this this guy is a heavy hitter. <laughs> um, no, nah, I'm just playing. But <clears throat> just, just peculiar. Uh, you know, you and I have talked a lot about the show Don't Tell. Yeah. Uh, as of late, like method of storytelling, this is a show don't tell movie. Probably eighty percent show. I'm not even kidding. Mm. Um, I, I'm wondering if there's specific things I should mention to you, but it's like I don't want to like taint your experience going in and have you looking for stuff. You know what I mean? So mm. I'll just say I recommend you see the movie. I recommend yeah. everybody see the movie. But I, but I will also say. Um, like, there are artsy movies like this where it's like, oh, not enough people are going to see this. Um, everybody should. You know what I mean? Like, you're, I don't know, Grave of the Fireflies type shit. Like, especially with this kind of subject matter. Sure. Uh, I don't know if this is, like, in that stratosphere for me. Like, I'm happy that I saw it. And I'm definitely happy that I saw it in a theater <clears throat> because, like, the theater just really is where these kind of stories belong. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if this, like... I don't know if it blew me away. It, it felt it left me feeling both upset and bewildered, um, which might be part of what they were going for. To be honest, okay. it's a very um, intentional movie. Like, there's yeah. nothing in there by accident. It's just very deliberate. But yeah, uh, yeah. If I uh, but just peculiar, and we'll, we'll talk more spoiler territory and more like specific things that I want to point to. Once you've seen it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I am glad I saw it and I highly recommend you see it in the theater. Fucking A. Well, we'll see. Hopefully hopefully I have the time to see it in the theater yeah. before uh, Sunday. Not that it matters. Like, I'm going to see it no matter what. Whether you know, It doesn't have to be before Oscar night, but yeah. I would like to see it prior to Oscar yeah. night. i got a busy week to catch up on all those. Like. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously, like you know, you, neither of us have seen Dune, but I'm sure both of us are aware that its reception has been like being heralded as like you know one of the best movies ever it's a yeah slam i, ha dunk I have been i have been avoiding it oh um, sorry <laughs> reviews no 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 no. just the, i i talked to bronson he's my like you know i was like dude like just brass tax me you know i don't need i don't i don't want much but he um he liked it he liked it a lot he said he liked it we did like a he did hit me with like a couple i'm not gonna say which number he hit me with a couple numbers and he like it was like 0.5 more than the first one so Interesting. That was, uh, and his point was, um, which I think was like, not everyone's issue with the first movie, but you, by the end of the movie, everyone kind of had the feeling of, oh, well, they clearly did all the legwork to set, like, to pay off. Oh, it's a one. setup. Yeah. Dune 1 feels super set up. Like, and, you know, I think we all knew that. Yeah. So to hear, like, you know, that the payoffs are relevant in the second one, it's like, okay, well, that's good. That's yeah. what I want to know. I just don't want them to be like, and a third one. But he has he has said uh, this week that Dune 3 is not his next movie. It Like, there will be something in between. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Because they have announced... They announced Dune 3 earlier... Or early last year, I believe. Yeah. They said it was, a, like, greenlit. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Based, yeah, just based off, like, early Dune 2 stuff. They're like, yeah. they're like, fuck yeah, like, you're getting the third one. And he signed on to do it. But he, he has come out in the interviews this week saying, like... There's going to be something in between. So Okay, I think I had seen that he had started maybe writing Dune 3. Mm. Um, but I didn't know that uh, that there was going to be a movie in between. That's not the end of the world, though. I mean, 
you know, no. a little bit of time and time and some distance is not a bad thing. I, I will say, just because I haven't read the book, um, oh, you should. You I should know, but you know, this is one of those things, though, right? Like, Dune Two is here. I saw Dune One like going in with with you know uh, going in cold. See, I'm rusty. Yeah. It has been two weeks. Um, <laughs> And, like, I thought about at that time, you and I had talked about, like, oh, should I try and get the book in? I didn't have time. And I was like, no, you know what? Fuck it. Like, it's Denis Villeneuve. Yep. I trust him. I'm going to go We're in. good hands. Yeah. And then after I read it, or after I saw it, I was like, man, I don't know. That felt, to me, like a slam dunk. Maybe I just wait, and then I read it after. Um, yeah. And so I, I waited. And, uh, but with, so with that point in mind... I, I was super not stoked about, like, just the spoiler content, on, even on the posters. Like, even if you try to go Zero Dark Grant, like, all the images are pretty, like, oh yeah, you look what happens. And I, it's like, I probably could, I, could, I probably well, yeah, I've guessed. read the book, so, like, I don't really, yeah, that's the one I don't mind seeing, because, um, you know, I've, I've read it. But, but yeah. should I talk about what's on the posters and shit? Uh, yeah, let's say it's, like, nothing new to me, unless, yeah. like, they drastically make something new, but... I mean, I don't know, it's, like, it's, like, it's, it's Paul, like, leading the army, riding sandworms, calling sandworms, it's, like, what the fuck, man? Like, I figured it was gonna go well. Yeah, it's fucking jihad time. Yeah, yeah but I figured, yeah. I figured yeah. he was gonna totally go right. there, but, like, I didn't know he was gonna, like, it was gonna happen in this movie, this way, I don't know, I was, like, let me maybe enjoy the build, I don't know. Yeah, it... <sighs> Y- yes and no. I wouldn't. I would not beat yourself up too much about that. Okay, because I feel like totally there's m- many more surprises and fun things. I th- I think there's context for all that, and I don't think it's necessary. It's not 100 percent what you think. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Like it's not spoiler. That that's you know what you're seeing isn't spoiler. What I'm saying it really isn't spoiler. It's just kind of like, you know, the, like Broad if stroke. you really think about stuff in 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 the first movie and like the mind and this and that and like visualization like it's right, i wouldn't, right, worry. I wouldn't worry about too much no no but let's say after you, after this one you can read the book because like dune 3 is not going to be the first book yeah because there's like a third because the third movie would cover what then uh well yeah here we go this is really it gets sticky because like there i think there's six in total and maybe nine but i think like the the last three like even like dune fans are kind of like it, like it's not fan fiction, but like Frank didn't write that one kind of thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um. But like the first six are like a huge deal, um, and like the main story. So I, I think what they're gonna try and do is like kick off like another two parter for the second book, maybe. Oh God. Um. And like probably cap it off there because the third book is borderline. Like they, I would. I don't think they have the fucking cojones to like do what happens in the third book huh. to be completely honest with you it gets fucking weird and like uh, it's for what is it that is frank it's herbert too cool. yeah. yeah yeah he did the first the original six okay. and then i think his estate like i think uh his either his son or like hired pen uh you know authors kind of rounded out like uh, through his notes yeah. or whatever but i think the lot like the seven eight nine are like less lesser love why sure, is this if conversation I remember. making me want to read berserk of all things anyway oh, uh dude, yeah <laughs> God, I, I was get staring those. at a copy in the bookstore the other day, and I was like, "Should I just fucking do it?" And I was like, "No, no, no I'm reading One Piece. I'm reading One Piece. I gotta get through." One Piece. I gotta. I want to buy those big ones, the big black ones. I think you have to, because apparently there's like like a revised art in some of them. Yeah, too. like you get it's like the one to buy. And I keep d- dropping that it'd be a great birthday or Christmas gift, and nothing, nothing. <laughs> and I can't buy that myself, dude. So I don't know. Um, okay, I don't, I don't even know where to start here. Uh, maybe okay, wait, or not to start, but. I, I just want to bring up one thing, just because like we're in movie territory. Yeah. Um, did you see the Deadpool trailer? No, I'm avoiding that. Uh, okay, it'll be the first MCU movie we see in theaters in like a long time, I think. I would like to see that one with you. Yeah, we actually. should see that together, review it on the pod. Um, yeah. It Parking looks... lot pod? Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I, we can do whatever you want. Uh, is there anything else? Deadpool. movie related that i wanted to mention oh dude have you seen kumail nanjiani's on like a press tour for something and he's getting asked a lot about eternals no i haven't seen any of that he uh, is it michael? oh the one about him he he fucking he was so butthurt or not butthurt. michael like, the projections Rosenbaum's, were not uh yes yeah yes, yeah, yes, yes. yeah yeah i saw you saw that clip i saw that, that was a couple of weeks ago no yeah it's kind of interesting to hear his uh perspective it turns out like everything you were hearing was also quite right about like Marvel was pretty confident that thing was gonna fucking hit. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> they were convinced. They, had Chloe rip, Zhao. they, th- they thought Chloe Zhao was just like a like a guaranteed ticket. Yeah, 
and they're like, oh yeah, like the meddling we did has nothing to do with like her product. Like, it, you know, that's on her. I don't know. It's just the gaslighting. It's like everyone involved in that. I kind of feel bad for everybody. But uh, yeah, Chris Evans came out this week. Someone was asking him about like superhero fatigue and stuff, and he was like. <laughs> He said something about, like, I think they're hard to make. That's why there aren't many good ones as of these <laughs> lately. Well, they aren't well. Not yeah. Well. I don't, Aquaman I don't 2 ended its run with a $443 million worldwide take, making it the eighth DCEU movie in a row to lose money at the box office. Eighth in a row? Jesus yeah. Christ. Pretty interesting. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm very curious to see how this whole reboot of the dcu goes i'm uh, i'm telling you dude my early and remember this we have receipts my early prediction that james gunn superman movie is gonna bomb i think it's becoming more and more likely oh yeah i can see that not that it matters but like the uh there was like a very weird um i don't know if it was like a pr thing or what but like just this whole thing about the renaming of the movie of like dropping the legacy yeah and his, like, I trust James Gunn less and less now. Like, his, like, he used to be, like, a very, like, you know, very vocal and, like, kind of, you know, like, the everyman, you know? He kind of felt like one of us, you yeah. know? Like, oh, this is what I don't like, and I make these kind of movies, and da 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 mm-hmm. And then, like, at this from the second he got involved with the DC stuff, like, everything that comes out of his mouth is like, oh, like, you're, like, you're a puppet, dude. They like, made him, I mean, they made him, uh, <laughs> what? what the hell, co, is it? What the hell is Kevin Feige's title? Co- he's not co CEO oh, yeah. or he yeah uh, the boss whatever yeah. he's co runner of the whole of the whole mm. project and now like yeah. creative control or creative yeah. officer, but he has uh yeah he's answering a lot questions that are a lot larger. He's clearly dealing with like a broader thing and budgets and that he's not just a director on a movie anymore, right? No, and you can see like the significant change that that has brought out, and you know I get it. He's you know he's fucking defensive because people are coming at him all day i'm surprised he <laughs> engages as much as he does well that's his own fucking problem that is Maybe definitely not. his own problem yeah i don't know fucking hollywood people just makes hollywood me laugh. you see you see the tweets and just like you know the half written from the heart half written from the lawyer's office and it's like I, all of you are freaking bandits like yeah dude yeah. whatever you should get uh you just need a big star you need you know what you need you what? need Tom Cruise to start starring in more auteur-driven movies. Fucking A. Did you see that headline? Which one? The, that was a headline. Tom Cruise... Tarantino one? It was, the headline that came out was like, Tom Cruise wants to star in more auteur-driven driven movies. And then the next day it was like, in talks for Tarantino. And then the next day it was like, confirmed starring in Alexander Inaritu's next film. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, I don't know that's if that's still true, but that was like the sequence of events. Um, it's about a Scientology superhero that saves the planet. No, I'm kidding. Uh, and purges all thetans. I, I'm kidding. I don't know. I don't even know if that's accurate. But I did. The inner E2 thing is true. I would love to see that. I yeah. hope that comes to fruition. That'd be tight. Okay, what what do we talk about, dude? You want to talk some anime? No. Not much. It was pretty. Other than you watched Freeman. Yeah, caught up. You? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty tight, eh? Yeah, you know, it's funny, like, um, you, maybe this is like a, like a, like an anime fan problem, and maybe it was a little greedy of me, but I felt like by the end of the episode, it was like, you know, what they showed up, like the action and the, you know, visually what they showed in s- some parts of the episode. Oh, man. Were s- truly stellar. Like, just, Stellar you know. is the word, yeah. And uh, by the end of the episode, I... Again, I, I felt a little guilty saying it, and I was like, you know, because Corinne, this is now like a weekly watch, like the whole family watches. Oh, really? Like, Corinne is like, fuck, like she wants to go back and rewatch all the stuff she missed. It's that good? I had Sam watch <laughs> the pilot the other day. She was pissed about <laughs> it. She's like, isn't this show on currently? I was like, yeah, but it's that good. Yeah, it's so good. But uh, I like I said it out loud, I was like, I kind of feel like, you know, they held out on us. Like, I feel like they could have done more. Yeah. And I felt bad saying that for, for what they did, because it was so like explosive and like you know, a truly, a truly beautiful um, animation. But I, was, I did kind of, like, feel like, fuck, like, fuck, man, like, you really couldn't... But again, they're going to tease up next episode because, like, the fight isn't done there. Like, they're still in the thick of the dungeon, which is, I, I did have to remind myself of that, but... I Yeah, but I wonder yeah. if that... I'm very curious if there is another twist to the end of the second challenge because, remember the timing, right? Because you had confirmed there's, what, 28 episodes? Yeah, 28. So, 
it, it, it really depends on timing and, like, the pace. Like, do they want to wrap I, up this season with just this last second challenge being done? Or are they going to try and force... Because there's three, right? I think this is the last. With... We're talking about episode 25 of Free Rent, by the way, for the audience. Yeah. Oh, friends. yeah. Sorry. So I think episode 26 is going to be the wrap-up of the, the, the dungeon. Yeah. Um, and then may, maybe, like, four or five minutes into the next one of, like, getting out wiping the dust off, going to, like, ceremony, whatever it may be. And I think we'll have one one last, like, um, the group, the gangs back on the road kind of thing. Like, you know, kind of core one stuff. And then, you know, kind of teeing up for, for what's come next. But I think I think next episode, because they have teed up, they're still, like, the dungeon boss. And then also, like, they're, the rest of the uh, mimics are kind of, or not mimics, the, uh, yeah. the copycats are coming, so... And they, they put so much effort into, like, getting rid of the positions. Like, they are going to do that. I'm, like, I'm almost certain. True. So, but, uh, yeah. Um, solo leveling. Talking about fucking holding out on us. Like, ultimate Yo. blue balls with fucking solo leveling, dude. I was fucking choked. Yo. <laughs> Did you see it was the most disliked episode on Crunchyroll? <laughs> this most recent one or the, uh, the, the 7.5. Recap? The recap. Yeah. The, the recap. How funny is that, though? That's kind of funny. But do you know what's worse is we, we, so we get a week of a recap, which I did know was coming. Mm -hmm. So I just, I, I dodged it. And then, but like all, like literally all week, I'm, I'm really into solo. Like I really, a full turnaround, you know, for weeks now I have been like, I'm good. Yeah. Like I, I really like this show all week. I was like, I can't wait for Saturday. I can't wait for Saturday. Like I'm really, I really just want to see what they're going to do. Cause there's like only four episodes left. Mm -hmm. I want to see. And then we get to this, and I understand it, it is kind of an important episode because it's kind of teeing up. To me, it's more teeing up season two stuff than it is like the rest of this arc, which is kind of annoying in, how, in retrospect. How long do we have left? We have, uh, I guess, three episodes. Oh, or nine, fuck. nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No, Everything four. is fucking twelve. We have, four. We have four. Yeah, we're right, right. three even spoiled this dude. <laughs> and Every now and then you get, spoiled you get spoiled by an anime that gives you an actual season at once. Yeah, so. I, you know, but, like, there's just... We had that week of, like, the recap, and then we have, like, sit through, like, another, like, 24 minutes of, like, fuck, man. Like, is no one going to get cut? Like, you know? Like, are we going to... Like, where's the action? You know, I want to see the... Because ju that's the show. It's, it was marketed as, like, a fucking... Yeah. Like, a power shown in, you know, let's fucking fight. And it's just, you know, empty. Like, we got nothing... Like, again, I know it was all set up, and, you know, we're going to jump right into, you know... um, I think this next episode. I think this next, like these last four episodes, are gonna be pretty fucking dark. Like they got that, that they got that crew back together, which is just say. was very ominous. It, yeah, they definitely didn't do that by accident. It definitely feels like uh, we're going in for like a round two of a traumatic experience. Mm. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I was just kind of like, like you know, like Saturday night. I was like super stoked. I was like fucking like you know, let's dive into it. I got, you know, I had my pops and freaking you know, I'm ready to go. Let's turn on. You know, headphones are on. Uh, that isn't uh, I was, uh, yeah. so I, I think I got it worse though, because I didn't know that 7.5 was a recap episode <laughs> and I was sick and I was like, oh my God, this is all, like, I'll binge. It's all I got. You know, I was like, oh, oh, like, you know, I mean, I'm all on the couch. I'm like, oh fuck it, dude. I'm under the heated blanket. Like, screw it. I'll throw this on. This is going to, this is going to inject some lifeblood into me. And it's a recap episode. I was like, you, this is, yeah. this is dirty. They did me dirty. I am chilled to the bone. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I will say like. From, you know, I do reliably have uh, a path out now because I still have like a bank of Shangri La Frontier episodes that I'm just not motoring how far, through. How how far are you now? I just watched last night. I watched episode ten. So he just Sunraku just beat the uh, clown spider. Oh okay. Oh shit! Wow. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I, I slowed down, I think, when we were on vacation or something. Yeah. Uh, and then I just picked it up back up uh, recently. Um, and then, like... Let's get to the juice there shortly. Yeah, so he beat the clown spider, and then, like, two of his friends that he plays other games with... Yeah. Uh, the one sh uh, Pencil Knight wants him... Pencil, yeah, Pencil Gun, yeah. The, they want him to... The three of them to fight one of the... A different unique than the one he's encountered. And it feels, yes. like, ominous. That's the arc. Like, he doesn't have yeah. all the information... Sounds interesting. And we also learned that if an NPC dies, like his bunny, uh, it dies permanently. Um, yeah. Uh, which, whoa, actually, I must have missed that detail. Yeah, that was like a big uh, reveal in that uh, in that episode. So that's uh, interesting. It's funny, though, like, you, number one, like, 
you this was a great recommendation if, if, if you like solo leveling definitely go watch shangri la frontier <laughs> yeah very it, good back-to-back shows it is interesting though that like um i i don't imagine a lot of people are watching both in tandem well, well no that's not true right because shangri la is on right now isn't sundays it? Yeah, Sundays and solo leveling's on Saturdays. What I was going to say was, I feel like the best way to get bang for your buck is, like, watch them at different times of the year, because I feel like they're both so good, but they do oh, kind of... Spreading bleed. that feeling out, yeah. Exactly. They kind of bleed over. Sometimes I get confused. I'm like, oh, shit, which one is which again? Oh, didn't he, didn't he get a new weapon? I'm like, oh, no, that's in the different the other one. Um, they kind of strap... They can, it's funny, because they scratch such different itches in the same genre. Yeah. Like you have... You kind of have... And solo leveling... Funnily enough, you have like the ultra overpowered, but like clearly newbie newbie type player. Yeah, figuring out the systems like, oh, what does this do? And then you have the opposite, like you know, the kind of like you know, the more aloof, but like super hardcore gamer who knows like just knows that like the minutia of games are essentially the same across like all yeah. games, right? And it's like, oh, this probably does this, so you know, da, da, da. like the two different types of people playing the game you know in quotations game for solo leveling but uh i don't know it's it's two awesome shows i still i still cannot get over how good shangri-la frontier looks at all times like not even the actions it's so so consistent like and not even just like okay consistent like it it is great consistent animation like it's and then you know when it dials up it just it's like a 10 yeah but uh I just like the world oh, building. I'm so excited for you. Dude. The world building is good, and like you're like no exaggeration. You're getting some, the, the best shit so far. Oh, really? The show is is coming. It's in ahead. Really, yeah, yeah. Introducing the two friends was a huge boon to the show. They add like so much uh, life. Like, oh, like, like the two it, people that he's gonna get uh, team up with. Yeah, nice. those like, yeah, like his re- his real life friends, like kind of playing the game, and like just the three of them will have such. It gets to the point where. Kind of like how we would like fuck with each other online, like in game and all, like like the smack talking. But like it, it's all playful. We're all playing. Yeah. It's like friendly fucking with each other. They kind of like not that they dial up, it just kind of like appears naturally. It's like oh, that is like a thing they do, you know. Yeah. And like you know, though <laughs> I don't know. It's there's multiple times in the show. Continuously, I'm surprised with how accurately they kind of. And not in like the edge lordy way, but like it's just like oh my god, like that's that, that was me at seventeen. You know, like yeah. that was, you know, David 17. That's how we talked. That's how we did, you know, like we timed it up. We, you know, it's, I don't know. It's, and, but it also hits like a younger generation too. Like there is some stuff I'm like, oh, I guess that is kind of like how it is now. Like I, I'm aware of it, but I'm not a part of it kind yeah. of thing. So it's, I don't know. It's part insightful being, and forward thinking. I don't know. Me really all, dude. Fucking A, man. Because we're, we're aged. Yeah. Anything else? Oh. Anything wise? Um, actually, we saw that, uh, I sent you that link this morning. Apparently, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, the Blu-ray, uh, they've been officially announced, and they're doing, like, a screening event in, in Japan. Uh, they're gonna have the, uh, the fully finished episode 17 of season 2. Yeah, that's the Sakuna the, uh, versus Mahara Mahara, Mahara fight, right? Yeah. That was the one that got, like, the most criticism, or, I don't want to say, I mean... Criticism and well, then was, outcry from the actual animation staff about it being well, incomplete, right? There was all the quotes of, like, only 30% of, like, yeah. the intended vision, vision was, like, completed. And, like, apparently, you know. So so my my curiosity is, are they just going to make that? Do you think they'll, like, in good faith, just make that public online or, like, update Crunchyroll? Or is that just going to be, like, you know, locked to, like, a $80 Blu-ray forever? My, Until, like, someone rips it and put it online. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, my uh, guess would be the latter. Because uh, I know, is, yeah, just because you know, um, we we've talked about this on the show before, like you know, Attack on Titan and and just One Punch Man. There's some well documented yeah. cases of like the Blu-ray having a lot of improvements and uh, edits over yeah. the originally streamed versions, and they never port those over to streaming. Mm-hmm. Um, now in this instance, it's like you know, maybe it's it's such a drastic change that they will, but I have a funny feeling that they won't. Well, it's interesting because they are having an event, like a viewing event for it. Yeah. Like it's being marketed and advertised to like get your tickets now, like almost like the DVD. So like, like in a thing. theater, like on a projector somewhere? I believe so in Japan, yeah. Like yeah. it's like, I think it's going to... Even then, that's a My piece. understanding is it was going to be on TV, like it was like a rebroadcast. And then... Ah. So like, maybe. If yeah, it, okay. If it's if like a sub situation, like a Crunchyroll, you know, you know, because it goes live there, then we get it. I'm almost wondering if it's like... Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe we also get an update to that. That'd be know. interesting if they do. I would, I would obviously rewatch that again. I love that episode. 
you know, even when it aired, but it was just yeah. like, you know, there was just clearly like some messiness. You could feel it. You could see yeah. it. Like you'd see like the, uh, almost like test drawings, you know, yeah. like it was like storyboards. I mean, at points. you know, one thing we actually haven't even brought up, um, but I don't, we don't have to like go through the whole thing, uh, is like the, the, they won best anime of the year at the Crunchyroll Awards. Sure. Yeah. Demon yeah. Slayer won best animation, which for its weakest season, which is interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the crunchy like i think and i'm starting to think rightly so that the crunchy roll awards get quite a bit of criticism generally. i've never watched them uh i just noticed that they get quite a bit of criticism i think like the way their timing works is weird like chainsaw man won for best new anime and it's like what yeah right and it's like wait what uh, the timing the the period in which they accept nominations for and that, that they're evaluating on is very very odd um, is that kind of a 2022 show? Yeah. that Because I think it started in 22, but technically finished in 23, maybe. Maybe that's what oh, happened. Oh, that's bullshit. So it's just very, uh, it's very odd. And um, I think Attack on Titan won, like, the score. I, I don't know. They had a very peculiar uh, awards. But um, I will say in Jujutsu Kaisen's defense, despite it being, like, the take that everybody has, season two is pretty absurd. Oh no! Mm. This is no. This is the uh, thing, dude. Here, here's what it is: is that they won best anime, right? Yeah. But the way their time period works is that the cutoff finished at the hidden inventory arc. So they're oh. only supposed to judge it based off of that arc, and they still gave it best anime of the year. And so people were pissed about that. Like, well, there's oh. some good shit in there. There's some good shit in there for sure. But Dave, like... the finale to season one yeah. of Chainsaw Man aired December 28th, 2022. Yeah, I don't know. They won that Best New, new unless, best new anime. unless they dip back into like November or something. But... Yeah, they won Best New Anime. Pretty weird, eh? We're good for Chainsaw Man, but I don't know. That seems... Just kind of ask backwards. Ugh. Fucking Crunchyroll. Good yeah. Damn. Um, um, did you see, actually, speaking of One Punch Man, you see, uh, the season three officially announced? Yeah, but I never watched season two. I, I, yeah. I heard it got dumped on pretty bad. Well, guess what? Uh, season three is being done by the same, uh, studio as season two. It was the issue that they switched from season one to season two? Well, it was, I think Madhouse did the original. So, like, the, like, Freerun team, or Freerun studio. Uh-huh. Did, like, the first season, which was, like, you know, like, ball out hit. Yeah. Um, but JC staff, which... You know, I don't know, like, people, I, I don't, like, I don't, know, like, know a lot of their work all that well. Like, people goof on them pretty hard, but, uh, um, I don't know. Like, because the thing is, like, the big deal is, like, the director is staying, and he's, like, he did seasons one, two, and he's going to be doing three. Like, he's, like, very involved in the series. Yeah. And he was, like, single, apparently, I was reading online this week, like, was single-handedly, like, doing, like, the key animations for, like, all the good shit that was happening in season two, like, he was doing by himself. Jeez. And, like, the rest of the, you know, like, the, all the other stuff didn't look all that great. It's just kind of, like, Reddit conjecture or whatever, but, um, but, um, but, yeah, so, I don't know. But the thing people are worried is, like, the stuff that is going to happen in Season 3 is, like, all-time, like, visual moments from the manga. Mm. So, it's, like, kind of like, oh, shit, like, are they just gonna not try, or are they gonna try and, like, I've seen the stills, like, people posted it. It's funny too. I remember when it first got leaked, like uh, like six or seven months ago, that you know it was coming, and like you know people were just posting like pictures in the thread of like this is supposed to take place, and it's just like this giant shot of like space <laughs> okay. and and some be I don't know if it's a being or a planet or a ship or whatever it is, and the detail on it is berserk levels of like beauty. It is, this is why I wanna... super detailed. We gotta and, buy uh, berserk, dude. We should do. I know I, I'm derailing this. But we should just both buy like that the volume one and like do a review of it. Yeah, I do. I, every time we need, mention, you don't need to twist my arm to buy a volume. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah. So it, it, what it, it sounds like it's on a very grandiose scale, and people are are concerned about the animation quality coming off. I of think it. there's I think there's some apprehension for S2? sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Shit, I was gonna say something. Oh yeah, is the guy who does One Punch Man the same dude who did Mob Psycho? The author is. The, not, yeah, yeah. Not, the, not the art. Yeah. Not the art. Oh, okay. So he yeah. wrote both, but he didn't draw. So both. he, no, he, so the manga for Mob Psycho did the art and the story. Uh-huh. 
but he like he i think we've talked about this before is like not a good artist and like that was kind of like the thing like mob psycho in the manga kind of looks like shit Oh, um, and it's kind like of intentional, really, but they really ran with it in the animation, I guess. And like, yes, exactly. Kind of really kind of played on like what it was. And that, that was like his apparently like a big part of when it was getting, you know, the adaptation of like, make this not look like what I did, like sure. really go for it kind of thing. Um, so then when he started doing one punch man, he teamed up with an, like an artist, like who he was a fan of. And oh, like, that's cool. So he was like, you do this. And like, I think the only contribution he had is like just make Saitama look like mob. Yeah, <laughs> and, that's pretty funny. You know? But uh yeah yeah. A little so I don't know the, the uh I've heard like the One Punch Man it was so funny. We, we um when Leanne and I went to the the movie theater in Ottawa last, we popped over to the Indigo. We went to you know, we're looking at the manga section. And there was a group of I don't know, it's maybe like Crinze, like preteen, you know, middle, you know, teen, like definitely under 16. Yeah. And there was probably like eight kids and all of them were just like ripping through mon- or, uh, volumes of One Punch Man. <laughs> There's like, you know, speed reading, getting up, putting it back, grabbing another one, going back to the table. And I was just like, whoa, like this is like not the one. I was expecting Demon Slayer, right? Like the, but sure. these kids are like ripping through One Punch Man. And uh, I was just like, oh, yeah, that's interesting to see. Like, it, like it is big. You know, you see people talking about it all the time. Yeah. And just has, like, this kind of bit of a scar on its face just from that second season. Like, it really kind of killed some trajectory for it. But uh, Big break between S2 and 3, too. I mean, I guess there was yeah. also a significant break between Mob Psycho S2 and 3. Mm, like, yeah. No, I suppose two, so. Two, three years, right? Um... I think, no, season two, I was living here when season two was airing. Of? Uh, Mob Psycho. Okay, yeah. And I remember watching One Punch Man week to week at the old house, so that was like at least five plus years ago. That's pretty nuts. Almost five years ago? Yeah, five. Break. Yeah. Fuck. Um, okay, there's one other thing I have to mention. Uh, yeah. Because... I, I filmed a whole TikTok slash Instagram reel uh, where that has yet to be published uh, at Part Time Otaku Podcast, but it'll be out this week, giving my very brief thoughts on True Detective season four, and then Good. I and then you know I filmed this before I, we both got sick, um, and I was like, oh, you know, we talk about it in depth on the podcast, and this is me attempting to talk about it in depth on the podcast. I just want to give you my thoughts. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I assume you haven't seen it, right? No. No. Do you haven't. think you will? No. It's tough, man. I. I but yeah. it's also, it's also super weird what's happening. Like I, I haven't felt this kind of confused and like befuddled by a show and its reception, um, versus my own experience in like a long time. Like normally when people hate on a thing, you can, you know, whether or not they're being overly critical. You're like, I, I, but I do get where the angst is coming from, right? Sure. It's yeah. like, you know, like, again, I, and I hate to bring up the example, but it's such a good example. It's like the last Game of Thrones fan, uh, show, mm. right? It's like, that was worse than what they had done previously. Um, but it wasn't the worst thing on the planet, right? Like, there are people being like, that's literally unwatchable one out of ten. It's like, okay, well, <laughs> you might <laughs> <Exactly>. be, <laughs> you, you may be being a little hyperbolic. It is worse than what they did before. But it's not like, you know, un- it's, it's not unwatchable. Um, the True Detective thing is weird because HBO is claiming it's the most watched season that they've done. And they've renewed it for another season under the same showrunner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, really? And it's, it's like big... certified fresh. I, I don't know if this has changed in the last couple of weeks. But like, you know, Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb scores were like solid. And yet any, t- any community I can find that dis- is discussing it in depth hates it. And they hate it so passionately, and they are pointing out so many inconsistencies that it's like uh, the, the two things aren't meshing super well. Mm. And even like some of the mainstream traditional media that are covering it are like generally positive. But then like Forbes put out this huge review on it, and the title of the review was like an embarrassingly, an embarrassingly sad and bad way to end a show or something. <laughs> like, I just, it's just so weird seeing how how divided people are in in and how they're reviewing it um i guess i'll just give you my quick thoughts on it which are that it, i i think it's okay to good like it's between a five and a six Damn. um but i was you know i think you're hoping for like a seven or an eight maybe like yeah 
Yeah, yeah. Maybe Seriously. maybe it's between a six and a seven, but that's just like a big leap between a seven and an eight show. You know what I mean? See, uh, I would a seven. I would just say is a straight up. It's a good show. That's like my line. Like if yeah. it's a seven, it's just a good show. You know. But like if there's, you know, I don't. It, it's funny because like I was talking to Devin about it at dinner. The Did other he watch? Night. He watched it all, and I was like, he, he asked me, I was like, no, I haven't, and he's like, are you going to? And I saw the smirk on his face, I'm like, no, but like, I'm not. What did he say? Hit me with it, and he was like, he's like, I didn't fucking like it at all. Yeah. And uh, he, uh, you know, both him both him and his uh, partner, and uh, I like, it, I was just kind of like, oh, shit, and he was like, yeah, he's like, I, he's like, I like this less than season three, and I fucking hated season three. <laughs> I was like, yeah. whoa, holy shit. I was like, okay. All right. I think, but, uh, uh, yeah. it, I've said this a bunch, but like the cinematography on it is like top notch. It's the best the show has done, like from a visual perspective. Sure. Um, I think like, you know, they're, they're afforded like a, a lot of wins there because of like where they just, uh, decided to shoot it, how they shot mm. it. It's at night. It's in Alaska or up North. They made some really, and I don't feel bad bag, bagging on this, like just straight up dumb decisions uh hmm. cgiing in the pilot like dude there's like a pointless like they cgi a bear and a and a herd of elk like for no reason like, they, like <laughs> was that the clip i sent you the portlandia yeah clip? Was yeah that... <laughs> so bad it's like what are you doing um they, you That's had told funny. me too it's funny because you had a line on this about like you know the season is a little more horror-y mm. and a little more supernatural and that's yeah. true and like that was like a welcome addition but I think they went a little too far with like that you can bring horror elements in a mystery and it work quite well. But I think the moment you, you start intentionally not closing plots because you can chalk them up to the supernatural factor, that's like a bad look. Hmm. And there are, I want to say over a dozen scenes, setups, subplots that start that have no meaningful explanation of any kind. Huh. And uh, and many and, and there are a couple that are like main character related that at least at the end they're like they give you kind of a here's your ambiguity ending, right? And it's like choose your own adventure. And that's okay. okay. I I don't think audiences hate that. I mean, sure. You know, it's like, "Oh, did they did they really do this or is that meant to be like uh, yeah, mystical yeah. and i don't like that but at least they give you like the choice but there's like a at least a dozen questions that they don't even give you an inkling that are just absolutely unexplainable uh, that's a bummer and uh i can't i can't state enough that how clunky some of the dialogue is um and i think i mentioned this to you before but like part of the magic to season one and you can't not mention season one because everything is mm. in the shadow of it yeah but like Part of the magic was like the chemistry between the characters, right? And how good char- the uh, stars were at character acting. Like, you know, McConaughey gets a lot of the props, but like Woody Harrelson. Oh, Woody fucking showed up. Unbelievable yeah. performance. And uh, you, you just care. You care about the characters. You care about what they're going through, whether they're good, bad, or in between. One of the one of the best hypocrites on TV I've ever so seen was just Woody Harrelson in that such show. Such a it human was character, right? Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if it's a lack of chemistry, if it's poor writing, poor execution, entirely miscast, but everything about the main, the character, the relationship between the, the two leads, I almost don't like any of it. And that's like a big fucking problem. Like, <laughs> Yeah, Devin did point out he didn't enjoy any... And he's like, any time Jodie Foster is on the screen, I like was not enjoying the show. Yeah, and it's... When you're having a hard time deciding, is it is Jodie... Pr- foster's performance bad or is it everything she says is bad and like which is the issue or is it both that's like a you're in a room with no good answers yeah that's that's uh it's a tough pill to swallow and there's a whole like subsect part of the internet it's like oh you're just blaming them because it's like two female leads it's like no dude i promise you get out of here because of course that has to be an issue right like of course it has to be an angle and it's like nah man like the the the, uh that's not the problem here it's the storytelling so yeah, uh, big disappointment, and uh, I just think it's just confusing that they're gonna do more. I don't know. I just the whole thing is confusing. I think they should have just changed the name, but like then you don't get to leverage the brand, which they clearly wanted to do. And also, apparently, people watched it. So like, what the fuck do I know? 
You know what but I mean? Like, okay, is this like a Netflix thing where they say like we we assure you like a lot of people watched it, but we won't tell you how many people watched it. Like, is this HBO <sighs> kind of playing the streaming? I think game they're like saying else now? they're saying I think they put out numbers, but it's also like like oh, it's the most streamed version of True Detective, but it's like it's also like yeah, like streaming numbers a decade ago for season one didn't exist. Yeah. So it's like you did HBO Max d- didn't exist. Yeah. You know what I mean? I watched that on demand on on my Bell PVR. So. Wow. Rip. Y- you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. they, they, I don't know. Maybe maybe they're, uh, like, to your point, like, kind of futzing and kind of cherry-picking cherry their stats. But they're saying they're renewing it under the same showrunner. So, I don't know. The, the thing is, is that, like, it's not shocking when we come on this show and we talk about, like, here's the thing that's out there and I don't like it and here are my reasons and I'm not trying to rain on anybody's parade. Mm. But most of the time, I think, like, you get where the audience is coming from. You know what I mean? This one is just confusing because there seems to be an absurdly intense, um, overly critical look at it from like the community that I've always watched True Detective from, and then like yeah. HBO being like, "This is so good, we're doing it again." And it's yeah, like, we, I we don't rule. I don't understand. Like, I yeah. just don't. I don't get where the. Uh, I don't get where the rubber meets the road. I don't know. I don't see where the disconnect is, and like that doesn't happen often. Where like. You know what I mean? You can usually at least see why people love a thing. Yeah. I'm just, it's like, is it dead internet theory? Like, I haven't met a person who actually liked it yet. But I keep hearing that it did well. So it's, it's just been a super confounding experience. Yeah, I've heard, uh, it's funny, I um, I was working in someone's home uh, this week and they were watching it. <laughs> and I watched the guy like fucking like you like fuck this shit and like turned it off, <laughs> and I just could only laugh. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> like, oh this is just like literally. I've only talked to you know you this you know this customer and then fucking you know Devin, the only people I've heard like and then the internet. But the internet's always fucking angry. But you know what the internet's not angry about, and this this can be the last thing we talk about. Mm. It's a quick thing because I do I refuse to get even remotely in depth with you until you have watched any of it what shogun dude oh is it good oh yeah brother <laughs> yeah we're we should be watching that like week to week really i don't is know how it... long it's gonna be but it's uh so how many did they put out i think uh it was two initially and actually i think uh tonight is the third episode okay. or right now the third episode i was asking sam the other day have you seen this she's like no i haven't seen anything for it but I, I i've seen like trailers and stuff and i was just like it has you know? itched my hunger like because one of the best games last gen on playstation like by far oh it's based on a video game no no, no. it's based on a novel but it's like the ghost of that ghost of tsushima game the, the sony made oh yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah and it just like it just like it, it's like the last samurai but not like you know white friggin you know like a white savior like yeah it's funny because i think there's like there is technically like a white savior part to it but mm-hmm. but that was also part of, like the book was written i think in like Leanna's dad read the book in high school. It was like a big deal. Like everyone fucking read Shogun. Hmm. It was like like a huge bestseller, and it's like loosely based on. I'm, I'm blanking on which period it is, but like it going essentially like wet the Western capitalism is like fucking slamming into. Yeah, can you imagine, fucking <laughs> samurais and dinosaurs? But fuck yeah, dude. Um, no, but it just kind of takes place in like you know like the Western capital you know capitalist like march into Japan. Oh, okay. And just like the lat like you know the like kind of like the ending of a, a period and like you know of, of a certain way. Which is like the period that Last Samurai movie tried to focus in on, despite um, its flaws. I believe a little but earlier slightly before than that. that. I think it's like right as that shit it's is before, like not like it's before the Tom foothold has up with guns. S- yeah, pretty much. I, I think the foothold wasn't quite there yet okay. is what i'm getting at i've only watched the first episode and i was sleepy and i did fall asleep for the last mm-hmm. 20 minutes um but everything i saw was just like this is this is the show and like the, the big thing being thrown around right now is like we haven't had a show like this since game of thrones yeah and i and that is being taken and run with but i think what the message is there is the effective use of scale and mm. properly filling the world you know like it's it's not um it just hits that line of like not being oversaturated. Sure. Just, everything kind of just fits and feel, you know, um, it was so, it was, <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, I saw a comment online of, uh, you know, someone's like, Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy what they can do to make Van- the forest of Vancouver look like this period of Japan. 
And so in the next comment was, uh, yeah, they made uh, 900 different planets on Stargate in Vancouver. Like, Japan's no fucking problem for them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I want to go back and watch some episodes of Stargate. But, yeah, I don't know. It's, 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 um, it, you know, that's the thing, too. Like, the only the people, it's, it's funny because, like, for the past, like, two months, I feel like every time I see my in-laws, my father-in-law is like, Shogun out yet? Like he, he like thinks really? like I got like the fucking it's like he's like the the marketing this very subtle marketing for like you know like dem, like it, it's definitely shooting for like thirty five you know middle middle thirties and up for sure like it's it's definitely like an old head show but Ooh. it's it is uh, very we, well we made are, we are that now so yeah man like I mean it's it's meant for otaku's and like people that read the book back interesting in the day. that's that's who it's for yeah. yeah. It's funny. We're it's really I, we're uh, just about caught up with Masters of the Air, and I, I won't do a whole thing on that. But I I have learned this thing about myself where it's just like uh, Shane Gillis has this joke that I won't butcher, but just there's something about getting older and being super interested in history. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just like that yeah. something's happening to me, and I don't know what it is, but uh, I can't get enough of this kind of stuff right now. Um. Okay, I'll, I'll check that out. Oh, we yeah. should end on the Q and A though. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot about this. Because um, we hadn't done a Q&A in a little while. Shouts out to Vivian for throwing that up. And then Travis actually submitted a pretty bitchin' question. Bitchin'. Um, so here's the, here's the question of the week. Uh, which, by the way, uh, if you want to submit your questions, we put it up on our Instagram stories on Mondays uh, at Part Time Otaku Podcast. And then we record on uh, you know Tuesdays. Episodes out on Wednesdays, so if you want to get your question on the pod, just uh, pop in the stories on Mondays. Okay, here it is. Many people list Demon Slayer as the perfect, quote, starter anime. What are the criteria for an anime to be one? I would say don't do what I did and don't force your girlfriend to watch Attack on Titan without any context. <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> uh, did I do that to Leanna? I'm trying to think. No. 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 Okay. Actually, my one in one of my top picks uh, for star anime is the Province Neverland, the one and only season. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, no, I think I think I, I agree with Travis and or in what people have told him. Like I think Demon Slayer is kind of like it, it's the modern like de facto one because it, there's there's obviously these hallmarks. But I think one of the big criteria or hall, hallmarks for a show you need is word of mouth is a big one, which hmm. you know generates itself. You know, because it, it can be hard buy-in for people. Like, oh, like, anime, like, I don't know. But, like, when you see the zeitgeist and the hype for a show, I think that it, it makes it that much easier for someone to, like, jump into it. Yeah, a bit of community around a thing. That's true. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, and then I think, you know, like, in any storytelling is you you need the hook. There has to be, like, a really strong hook right off the bat. It's funny. That's and what I have, too. There's, I think there's, and you can break that down once more, I think, into... Um, a mystery box story, you know, mm. or like, a, like kind of like a tea, like, you know, that kind of tips into attack on Titan promise. Neverland is like a big part of that. Um, and then I think the other one is just like a, like a sense of adventure straight off the bat. Yeah. You know, um, I think, you know, I think that's kind of like the, you know, the descending pyramid, uh, you, know, you could break that down more, but I think the, the hook and just a community, like a very open community, is often where you find the biggest ones, and then like the like legacy, like a legacy status show, kind of helps. Like, oh, like I've heard of that show. I remember people in high school read Death Note or saw Death Note. Like, why yeah. would I not watch Death Note? You know what I mean? So it's, I think, um, I think it only gets easier to find starter anime the more time has passed and like the bigger it gets, and it's only getting easier now. But uh, yeah, yeah, ease of access to everything too changes quite a yeah. bit. I, I had most of that in my notes. It's funny that you just ripped all that off the bat. I mean, good hook, I think that it can exist in a ton of forms, right? Like mystery mm -hmm. box is a good way to put it. But whether it's action, romance, you just need something to draw people in, which my biggest point on this list is it has to have a strong pilot. Like yeah, a lot well, of shows. Yeah. Ironically, I don't find my favorite show of all time, or at least one of them is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. And I don't think its pilot is great. I think its episode two is a better pilot uh, yeah. than the show's actual episode one. Um, I'm, a, I'm a staunch believer that Full Metal is not a starter anime. No, I that's, that is only, very fair. It has legacy only, status, but not a starter. It has anime. legacy status. I don't think it's a starter anime. and it, Maybe this is just like my own biases, but I love that story so much, and I think there's so many Things fine on. little details 
and and you know like kind of references like thinking forward moments or you know story forward moments that you almost want to be a little more comfortable watching anime especially yeah. if you want to be like someone who, who likes watching subs um but uh which you know i hope everyone is but anyway that's not here the fucking clip is not even staples is so funny yeah but uh and <laughs> um, i have a simple yeah. world building like jump yeah. in jump out not overly complex Mm -hmm. um like if you're just like a dude who watches like live action like fast and furious and then you try to watch mushuko tensei like that's a fucking nightmare you know what i mean (laughs) wow Uh, those two people in the same room yeah okay that's fair but you know what i mean like it's give that guy (laughs) demon slayer you know what i mean like he's guaranteed gonna have a good time with it or jujitsu kaisen you know what i mean maybe not jujitsu even then that's like a step further but uh demon slayer really is like just so accessible because it's so straightforward something with a foot Half in the real world, half in like a fantasy sci-fi setting. I mean, like Doctor Stone. D- or you said it earlier, one. Death Note. Death Note is yeah, Death Note is perfect. Cowboy Bebop. Mm, I don't think it's a starter anime. Whatever. Dude. As I've watched it, as I've watched it, I don't. Uh, 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 Just two Kaizen. Funny. Uh, Castlevania. Also. Cyberpunk. Yeah. So oh, sorry. well, yeah, Cyberpunk is. Uh, I think if you, if you want to come like crashing out of like what it really can be, yeah. you know, I think Cyberpunk's perfect for that. Is but, Mob Psycho uh, too much? Yeah, uh, yeah. That's I think that's again might be my own personal bias, but you probably do Mob like, Psycho as like your fifth anime. Yeah, it's in the Full Metal area. The, I was gonna I say the thing is you graduate quickly, right? Like if like Travis, I think just finished Jujutsu Kaisen, like he's caught up. It, so like now that you're caught up on that. And let's say you've watched Demon Slayer. Like, at that point, jump into your Death Notes, Cowboy Bebops. Like, you know what I mean? If you have your head wrapped around all that jujitsu stuff, like, <laughs> if you get survived. Start off with Neon Genesis. Yeah, start off with Neon Genesis. Yo, freaking Leanna hit me up. She's like, should we watch that? And I'm like, uh, uh, yes. Yes. Absolutely, we're going to watch that. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Take out yeah. a Prozac prescription and just hit play. <laughs> she was like, she was like, what? Like, she's like, I hear you and Dave talk about it all the time, and like, you know, like I, yeah, I'd like, I'd like to watch it, and I'm like, uh, she's like, what would you? I was like, you know, funny enough, I think it shares of anything we've watched together. It shares the most with Attack on Titan. Yeah, I don't definitely. think there would be Attack on Titan without Neon you know, Genesis. Yeah, and many other shows, obviously. But, yeah. Um, I think you know, there's a good one to one there. Yeah. And she's like, oh, like it's like dark, and I'm like, yeah, but like oh, in the touch. I was like, it's it's like a mentally ill show, <laughs> and she's like, oh okay, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like we're just, just like as long as you're ready to change as a person, um, before like yeah, just go in knowing you won't be, you'll be different on the way out than you were on the way in. Yeah, and you feel it from like episode to episode. You're like, oh, I'm I'm a different person now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. we're not even done yet. Yeah, yeah, so that's gonna be our journey. The hype is, I will say, remember, I remember feeling like the hype was a little much. Like just go in and try and just let it. <sighs> let the show flow through you man. you think i pop, about pumped the you journey. up too much for neon genesis uh no not necessarily you i just mean in general it's like legacy status of people oh, yeah. being like it is it's the one. best thing of all time it's so complex it's like yo it's like yeah it's like yeah it's deep but it's and you know at times confusing but just like watch it do your best to try and keep track of things and enjoy it and then mm. absolutely watch end of evangelion when you're when you're done the movie and then i think like you know then you can start searching the internet for answers. Yeah. But uh, it's an experience. Okay. I think yeah. we can wrap. Yeah. All right, man. It's good to be back, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Feels, feels like I got my arm back. And we will never leave you again. <sighs> and before we're sick next week. But uh, that's fine. Okay? Adult things happen to adults. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, we'll be back again next week. Subscribe to this on Apple Music and on Spotify at Part Time Otaku Podcast and all the social media platforms that have uh, already been mentioned uh I, yeah I'm, I'm out of practice i don't know how to finish this grant go ahead and say the thing bye guys cheers <laughs>